is blessing. And I do blessing things. Blessing. And when I do them, I always smile. Because blessing makes the world go round. Yes, blessing makes the world go round. So if you haven't seen the first half, I'll link to it in the Kokoroptu down below, as well as I'll link to it in my blog article as well, so that you can read it, watch it, both, you know. Uh, and in this video, I'm going to be doing a painting of this lamp. And you may be wondering why am I painting a lamp when I'm talking about Thanksgiving. I will talk about that in the painting component of this video. But first, we have some housekeeping to do. So Blessing VHR will be having a flash sale, a 10% off sale on my paintings uh, from now until February 12th. February 12th, not the 10th, the 10th is my sister's birthday. But from now until February 12th, my paintings will be on sale for 10% off. I'll link to my paintings uh, in the Kokoruptu down below uh, so that you can have easy access to the items that are on sale. Also, um, when I was filming this video, unfortunately, um, the part there's a part of the filming process that ended up the footage ended up being corrupt I don't know what happened with my capture card but I basically had to completely reformat my capture card because um, I had filmed two parts where I was painting the focal point of this piece aka the lamp so it was like all fixing to come together. I was almost done and I was just painting away and filming it. But for some reason, the capture card or I guess you could call it a memory stick or whatever, it did not save that footage. And what it ha what was there was just a blank thumbnail and I would click it to see like, hey, you know, did the footage get saved? and no it didn't happen and so when it happened the first time I was like oh well no big deal because I didn't really like that layer anyway and I didn't think anything was wrong with it but it turns out there was something wrong and I didn't know what was wrong with it so I ended up filming the second half not doing any research or anything and it didn't capture the like good layer uh, either so I don't have the finishing touches that I put on the painting, but I do still hope you enjoy the video and I have everything else leading up to that. And I will of course uh, share, you know, the finished painting. And in fact, I'm going to hang it up or display it and talk about my recommendations for, you know, what to, what to, you know, accessorize it with or what, what, what have you. But I, I just, I got so upset and I spent, I don't know how many hours trying to figure out what was wrong because this particular capture stick or memory stick or whatever it's not like I'm pretty sure the company that makes it is based in China or something and I couldn't find any <laughs> actual help with it I just kept seeing reviews of people saying that it doesn't work and everything but it's been working just fine for me um, the app is a little bit slow but not like completely slow to where I feel hindered by my video making process and so I haven't had any problems and when I was looking I kept seeing people saying oh well the app doesn't work and this that and the other thing and I was just like um it works for me <laughs> and this is not what I need help with so I ended up having to completely reformat my 
my uh, memory stick or whatever and thankfully I was able to offload all the future videos that are that were on the card I offloaded it to my laptop um, and so I just start just completely wiped everything because when in doubt you just you either turn it off and turn it back on which I did multiple times or you like just try and wipe everything or do a system restore or something and thankfully it worked so now I know in the future in case it starts acting up like that I'm just like okay I'm going to have to redo uh, footage and stuff um, but to just letting y'all know about that and those are all the announcements that I have so let's fly because I have my wings on and my pee stuff let's fly into the video Sorry, my hair got stuck. <laughs> so before I go, go on or continue with this, um, um, you know, voiceover and stuff, I just want to say that it looks like the city that I live in, the, um, you know, city workers, the construction workers or whatever, they, um, they're doing some weird thing outside on the street that I live on and they're digging right into the the street and taking out the <laughs> the gravel and stuff and I don't really know what's happening and they're quiet now but I'm pretty sure their trucks are still out there so I am in uh, a different room recording this and I, I just wanted to disclaim that if you hear noises and stuff, it is either a combination of them or my AC or just anything like that. I don't want y'all to get alarmed, but I forgot that last week they were marking my street off and I didn't know why they were out there. And now they're actually basically creating a hole and I, I don't know why and I'm too scared to ask them because you know um, social distancing and all that and I don't want to bother them because they're very they look very official in their uniforms and stuff but um yeah I'm just wishing them the best with whatever it is they're doing but I also have a job to do so <laughs> I'm trying to make this uh, voiceover as clear and crisp as possible I think I'm getting a little bit better at it uh, so anyway, without further ado, I did several outdoor Thanksgiving activities for families that I can't wait to talk about. After our grand afternoon feast, we played a Thanksgiving sport. Or, well, I mean, I guess it could be a sport for any time of the year, but we did it for Thanksgiving, and I actually, it was my first time doing it, and so I just, I just I called it a Thanksgiving sport. This Thanksgiving, I am thankful for my bio family and non-blood related families because while I was sad that I couldn't celebrate Thanksgiving with my bio family, I am thankful that I got to spend time with my non-blood, with one of my non-blood related families. After we had our first meal, we went outside and played with horseshoes. I wasn't very good at it, but it was super fun. We didn't use the cheap plastic ones. Ours were like real, or at least I think they told me that they're real because they told me that uh, they've been playing with these horseshoes, these same exact horseshoes for like ever. So I think they are the real deal. They were actually really uh, heavy, um, and it's not like what you see in the movies where it just looks so easy, like, they, they, they were quite weighty, <laughs> that's probably not even a word, but still, and they were the U-shape, and we were trying to throw them onto the ring and whatnot, um, and I got close, but I kept not throwing it in the right, uh, direction to where it could like grab a hold to the ring um but I still had a great time I I actually do enjoy doing outdoor activities despite me being a complete introvert and then some but that was my first time playing horseshoes 
and it was a very memorable experience because the way we each threw our horseshoes is very different um um my niece basically she throws them in a way that they whenever it landed it was like basically sticking up out of the the dirt or whatever which was quite hilarious and Maggie she um always threw them at kind of like a boomerang way to where they would just end up in a completely different direction and (laughs) it was just really hilarious but I had a lot of fun and um we each took turns so I threw quite quite a bit because I was trying to get really good at it but I threw it quite a bit and I couldn't get it on the ring but it's really more about having fun than you know being competitive because I'm not a very competitive person actually um so then after that Hope thought it was a good idea for me to ride on the back of her four-wheeler while Jerry drove. Yeah, so uh, Hope and Jerry, they have this uh, four-wheeler, and I was eyeballing it um, because I just I, I just was like, you know, what do they use that for? And I couldn't help but, like, look at it, and so... Hope said, like, you looked like you were eyeballing it for a while. And I was. While we were throwing our horseshoes, everyone had to move their cars and vehicles around because we were fixing to hit their cars. (laughs) And so that meant moving the four-wheeler, which Jerry's, like, really protective of. Um, So, yeah, Hope was right. I had never rode one before, but it reminded me so much of the monster trucks I would see on TV back when we had the Georgia Dome. Um, Yeah, so this was maybe... um, it's, It's been maybe three or four years since they tore down the Georgia Dome. And to this day, I'm still quite upset about their decision to do that, especially because I don't like the Mercedes, uh, well, they call it a dome, but I, I don't know. It doesn't look like a dome to me. I don't like that's there. I really do miss the dome. I have quite a lot of good memories about the Georgia Dome, but when I was younger, during summer vacation or whatever um my my family we never got to travel anywhere but I would see commercials about the monster trucks at the Georgia Dome and I always wanted to go see the monster trucks in person at the Dome and I never got to do that so when I saw their four-wheeler I was like that reminds me so much of those monster trucks that I never got to see Uh, So, regardless to say, I hopped on the back, (laughs) and Jerry was in the front, and he he told me, hold on to him, and, like, don't let go, and I was so nervous, because I was like, oh my gosh, I've never done this before, but I, I'm trying to, like, do more things that I've never done before instead of letting fear get in the way. Because when I was in college, there were a lot more opportunities for me to, like, go out of my comfort zone and do stuff. But due to my personal illnesses, I didn't do those things. And now, because I am getting professional help with those illnesses, I have been slowly coming out of my shell in the sense of trying things that I have never done before um and and I just really wanted to do something like this and I just thought you know I I kind of just have this like what better time than the present to sort of do things and I think a lot of that comes from the fact that you know I own a small business and people have asked me like you know how did you get started or why did you start or you know why are you doing this and stuff like that and I'm kind of just like you know uh well no better time than the present because I've always wanted to be my own boss and have my own job and stuff and because you know I just I don't like getting yelled at every day or whatever but I I just 
I, I just kind of felt like that this was the right path for me. And honestly, any small business owner will tell you that the path for like the success of a business, it's filled with a lot of twists and turns in every which way. And, and so there's no better time than the present. But the thing is, you before you even start your company, you have to go within yourself and ask, why is it that you want to do this? So not in terms of like, oh, well, I want to quit my day job or whatever, but like, what can you bring to the table that helps or benefits other people? And, you know, if you don't have an answer for that, then you, it would be hard for you to find the motivation to keep going because if your end goal is, well, I just want to make a lot of money or, well, I don't want to uh, go to like a regular job or I just want to work in my pajamas. Like, I mean, yeah, those are, you know, fine things, but they, they aren't, you know, the core thing, that passion or that tenacity that, that actually, motivates you to get out of bed despite all odds and motivates you to continue your company in spite of, you know, a pandemic, in spite of having some financial trouble or in spite of, you know, fam family stuff and other things or tech problems like the amount of tech problems I have had since, um, even back in the days when I had a Weebly website, like OGP stuffs will remember my really slow Weebly website. I just say all this to say that, you know, you have to live in the moment. And if the moment means you learning how to start a business or you even just starting on Etsy or, well, disclaimer, <laughs> I don't really know if starting on Etsy is as fruitful as it was before. I don't I don't believe that it is, as I've said before, but we're not going to repeat ourselves. But if it consists of you, you know, selling your stuff on Facebook in the Facebook marketplace and you get a little bit of money and you realize that you want to actually commit to this, then, you know, like, there's no time there's like no time greater than the present anyway we're talking about the ATV that the four wheelers that I was driving it was a blast I was scared at first but quickly got used to it oh my computer just fell asleep it felt like that feeling you get when you drive a convertible for the first time I hadn't had fun like that all year. Uh, yeah, I really, yeah, 2020 sucked. I <laughs> didn't really have a lot of fun till the end of the year, ironically. Um, but I loved being on the four wheeler. We drove on a lot of dirt roads because that part of Georgia has a lot of dirt roads, but it was so fun. Like the wind was blowing in my hair and we were just going like so fast and it was just so cool. Like, it handles dirt roads, like, so well. Anyway, after that, we, uh, I went back to Josh and Maggie's, uh, cause we had lots of rest while watching Christmas movies on TV. Um, and so we went, went back to Josh and Maggie's. Josh fell asleep while Maggie and I, we watched National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, and then we also watched Home Alone 2. We had a great time, um, and I really do enjoy those movies. I, even though it was Thanksgiving, it was technically, like, the ending of November, so, like, Christmas was coming up, and everyone really wanted to have, like, a very special Christmas, considering what year it was. So, like, I, I watched those movies with Maggie, and it was quite hilarious. Uh, then we went back to Hope's house to eat more food. 
And also dessert, she she basically uh just left everything out and she had like, you know, wrapped everything and cuz she she when we left her that afternoon when we left her place that afternoon, she was like, "I don't do dishes." <laughs> Y'all take everything. Please take all the food. I don't do dishes. And I was just, it was hilarious because everyone just left their food there. And they were just like, well, you know, you're hosting it at your house. So, you know, that's kind of what happens. So we came back and we ate more food to sort of help with the fact that, like, you know, we can't just leave that food there. And we also ate dessert. Um, and at night, their cabin looks so beautiful because it, it's just, it has that very homey sort of lighting that's like orangey yellow, but it just makes the cabin look so pretty. I ate pumpkin pie for dessert because I am allergic to chocolate, so I couldn't eat their chocolate pie. Um, and with that... Hope had also passed down two lamps to me that th- that they, her and Jerry, didn't want. And they're beautiful. Uh, and these lamps inspired my lamp painting design that you're watching me paint right now. And I don't have a photo of the golden lamp because I gave the golden lamp to my sister as one of her Christmas presents. Uh, I would like to paint... I would also like to paint a pretty full design on the wooden, on the actual wooden lamp in the future. And in terms of like Christmas and stuff, I did a lot of things for in December related to Christmas. And I would like to do future uh, blog articles and videos on those. So that's probably what I'm going to do because this is like the last part part of the Thanksgiving uh uh stuff um but it will be if I do it it will be posted like not in December and I get that I'm posting Thanksgiving stuff when not in November but considering the fact that every December um gets really busy for me I think y'all would be okay with me talking about Christmas stuff when it's not Christmas and everything. I mean, this is my channel, so I'm going to do what I want, but I just, I'm going to say, like, you know, if y'all see me talking about, like, eggnog and stuff, y- you'll know why. Um, yeah, so Hope and Jerry gave me two lamps, and they were really pretty, uh, well made, too. Um, so... So then we basically left. We Josh took all the food that he made and Hope gave me the rest of the pie, uh, the pumpkin pie, and I I got to take home the potato salad that I made. Uh then we went back to Josh and Maggie's house and then the next day uh they took me back home to my house. Um So let's get back to this painting. Talking about the painting uh, a little bit ago, uh, so I'm just going to continue. For now, I created this painting using my Schmincke gouache. Yes, I keep mentioning my Schmincke gouache, but uh, I actually do like it. Prior to using Schmincke gouache, I was using Winsor & Newton because my brother Lucky, he... He gave me a whole bunch of art stuff when he left art school. This was like when I was in high school and he was at art school because a lot of other stuff I don't feel comfortable talking about because it's like his story. I'm just kind of like there when it's all going down. But anyway, he gave me a lot like all of his art stuff when he left art school and one of it was a pack of of six colors of Windsor and Newton gouache and so that was my first introduction to gouache. I didn't use it when I was actually in high school because I thought they were oil paints. My mama and I thought that they were oil paints 
and so I didn't have any solvents and at that time the only YouTube videos for traditional media that I found a lot of it was like marker art and stuff like that and the oil paintings that I saw aside from the Bob Ross ones were they were all like in time lapse and instead of having like a voiceover they use like music and stuff and so I didn't excuse me I didn't really learn how to use oil paints or anything so and I would have taken a painting class when I was in high school but the year I was supposed to take it, my second year of high school, uh, they cut the funding for the art programs. So my art teacher reluctantly told me that there wasn't going to be a painting class that year. So <laughs> painting was like one of the things I always wanted to really learn how to do. And I couldn't really do that. I was self-taught from my mama, but you know... um art supplies were really expensive and this was before Walmart created their craft section um and so she taught me like pretty much everything else except how to paint and so I well, had these gouache this Windsor Newton gouache from high school all the way up until uh 2019 that was when I first started to use them and I liked the Windsor Newton but then I wanted to try a different brand and people recommended Schminka for me. So I tried Schminka. I got, cause what I like to do if I'm trying to switch brands and I didn't used to do this with my acrylics, but I'm trying to do it now. I would, if one of the colors from the first brand I had was starting to run out, I would then replace it with uh, a color with a color of the similar hue or even same pigment from an, from the new brand. So I think the first color I ran out of was the yellow, the primary yellow of Windsor and Newton, and I replaced it with the cadmium yellow hue in Schminka, and I fell in love because I I leave my um my gouache in my paletto and I let it dry. I mix in a little bit of glycerin with it and let it dry so that I can take it with me wherever I go type of thing. And I liked it because when I re-wet it, it gets creamy all over again. Like, I'm not going to say like straight out of the tube because I don't want gouache aficionados to yell at me and say, well, that's not how it is straight out of the tube. But it gets to the point where it's just really, really creamy. And I, despite me doing my best with my Windsor Newton, I could never get that same consistency. And also the colors are a lot stronger because I've been getting single pigment colors. Um, and so I really like the Schmincke gouache. I'm not sure if I'll try a different brand. I thought about trying the M. Graham company but I don't know I like the Schminka so I think I'm gonna just stick with it because um you know I don't want to get myself confused to the point where I have too many paints of too many brands because I kind of have that problem with my acrylics and I'm trying to use my acrylics again because I don't like having paint and art supplies just sit around anyway it this painting uses various shades of red because it is getting closer to Valentine's Day. Yeah, I thought, you know, it's getting closer to Valentine's Day. Why not do something that's not a traditional Valentine uh, type of painting, but use those colors? I don't know. I, I was just getting kind of tired of using fall colors. Uh, the background is actually an extreme abstract representation of the pattern on the lampshade I enjoy I really enjoy patterns that I try and I try to use it in a creative way yeah I noticed this may have been last year but I noticed that I really like looking at different textiles 
uh, and learning about different textiles and patterns and stuff. Like, back when I used to watch Project Runway, which was many, many moons ago, I loved the episode where whenever they had to create their own pattern and they would get it printed on some type of fabric and they would turn it into an outfit. Like, the one that Mondo made, he was one of my favorite Project Runway contestants, uh, where he was talking about being HIV positive. Um, that, that was like one of my favorites. I was like, I would love it if I could make my own, design my own, uh, fabric (laughs) or whatever. But I do love patterns. And so whenever I notice them, I just want to like paint patterns. And so I decided to use that lampshade pattern as a motif and this painting and have it as my background that way it can kind of be like uh both the lampshade and the lamp are on display in the painting without me deliberately having to paint a lampshade because I I like to take different elements of whatever it is I'm looking at and abstracting them and just making them look not natural if that makes sense and so that's kind of what I was doing I don't do it all the time but I used to do it quite a lot uh lately I've I've been just mainly painting from life or from a photo or whatever but I'd like um I like to do that and I I tilted the lamp because I want to get more creative with my art. I've done multiple life studies and while I do enjoy them, I want to bend the rules more so. Uh, yeah, I do life studies all the time, actually. Um, and, um, I mean, last week I couldn't do a lot of sketching, but I try to draw from life and when the weather gets better, I would like to do plein air painting and urban sketching, but right now I haven't really been able to do that unfortunately. And we're supposed to be getting snow in a few days. Like, what? (laughs) But, you know, so I I have a healthy dose of drawing from life and stuff. Um, But I would like to bend the traditional rules more so. I, uh, but also, I think I've talked about this in one of my other blog articles. Doesn't have a video attached, I don't think. Actually, it might. I'm not sure. Um, but I'm also trying to do more art inspired by, uh, my Nigerian heritage and other African forms of art, because that type of art's never really taught in American schools. We tend to just, or we, like I'm a teacher anymore, um, we, they, they tend to just stick with, like, the white painters, uh, from the Renaissance, and... But in my college art class, we did go back to art from Egypt. That's where we started. And that was actually really cool. And unfortunately, that was the only, like, African country that we explored. Um, And I'm not of Egyptian heritage. I'm of Nigerian heritage. Um, And so... So I, I would like to, like, do some of that. And because... This is February, and it's Black History Month. I decided, why not use this time now to really dive into and explore uh, art from Nigeria? Because I remember last year I read about the, the person who designed the Nigerian flag, and I'm pretty sure he's still alive. He's in his 80s. Um... And I just thought that was so cool. Like the meaning behind the colors on the flag. It it was just very... It was really, really cool to read about. So I'm going to try and do more research about Nigerian art. Anyway, I was... For this painting, I was inspired by the various creepy movies that I've seen that have scenes where everything looks warped and tilted or bothersome to the viewer it's just very like unsettling but they take it to the extreme I'd like to work up to where I can take it to the extreme 
I just, I'm just getting my feet with, feet wet with it, uh, for now, but, uh, and by creepy movies, I don't mean, like, anything involving, like, gore and, like, horror, I mean, like, you know, Tim Burton stuff, like, Coraline, uh, I don't think he did Coraline, but I love Coraline, but Tim Burton did Nightmare Before Christmas, which is one of my favorite Disney movies, um, but there's also Coraline, which I think was done by Laika, that I really enjoy, that has all of that creepy elements to it, and I'd like to explore more creepy elements and stuff in my regular art too, and so I'm I'm going to be working the piece that I have in my head for uh next week will will be a bit more in the sci-fi type of realm at least the way I see it in my head anyway I need to sketch it out still um but yeah so I uh I guess I'm just itching for something different I've done art this way in the past but now I really want to like go back to it uh and dive deeper into that um and I really hope you enjoy this painting the ana- the anatomy of a lamp is very feminine and I hope that I captured that well so back to you blessing and in, in front of the camera <sighs> sorry had to get a drink of hope get a little drink of water I drink a lot of water, so I, I tend to get, I tend to um, always have my favorite water bottle on me. So here we are with the finished painting. Now I tried to do something a little bit different. I tried, I actually torn edges, torn at the edges to try and sort of make it look, um, oh don't want the glare to try and make it look weathered and aged because I feel like this lamp um I feel like this lamp sort of has that sort of country style that I like to emulate you know and so I tried you know making it look weathered but I don't think I don't think that executed well but anyway this is what the painting looks like and I'll definitely have close-ups and everything but here it is in the frame and I thought it would look good right here so I cuz I made it with like you know very rosy reds and pinks um, and so I thought it would look great over here with my flowers oh, I can move that I can move that. And these are actually two crates that I stacked on top of each other. I collect crates a lot because the walls in my house, uh, it, this is sort of like my, technically it's supposed to be a dining room, but this table is not mine. It came here when I moved in it's like right up against the wall and I like having it there because it's shaped weird and so I don't have like a regular table but also I like to eat in the living room that I'm normally filming in uh because it's where the tv is it's kind of just what my family always did growing up we would eat in front of the tv so anyway this sort of dining area it doubles as a second library and I have a little pantry over there and everything's still I'm still um you know cleaning up it's not even spring yet but I'm doing spring cleaning and everything so you can't see none of that yet but I like to get crates whenever I can because you can stack them up so easily because in this particular area and in my kitchen and in my bedroom the walls are at an angle so I can't really bring in a lot of high up furniture um at least on like this side where these crates are at on the other side um where the camera is not facing at right now tall furniture could fit there but anyway so these are two crates and the ones down here have cds in them from the library i don't know if they still do it now because of the you know everything that's going on 
But once every six months, they'd have like a uh, a book sale where you would pay five dollars for a giant brown paper bag and like stuff it with a bunch of like books and stuff. And I decided to stuff it with all these CDs of like audio readings and stuff because I like to listen to CDs and whatnot. And up here we just have some magazines, um, a book that I basically live by when it comes to selling stuff in my company and up here I have this little basket of flowers I I like to collect fake flowers uh, and real flowers too and this is the flower lay that I wore in my last video I like wearing lays and stuff and so I thought that a painting like this would go great up here because I think it complements these flowers well so let's just put it this frame, I got it at Dollar Tree. It has the little thing right here and I had to attach a piece of string to the top in case I want to hang it on the wall or whatever. Um, so that's what I did. And these little peg holes, I had to put them in there because um, the little, like little black thingies that's supposed to keep the frame flat, they all pretty much broke off. So when I was doing my last photo shoot for the Happy Heart Collection. So let's put this, we can prop it right there like that. Oh, will it stay up? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. Just making sure. So let's prop it up like that. And I, rec I think having some flowers just right there and I think the feather the yellow lay with the beads I think it'll look really good next to it at the bottom right here just to add a pop of color that's not red so let me grab you guys and show you guys how it looks up close oh. <laughs> almost sat on my water bottle Uh, hashtag not sponsored by the way. So here is the painting. I'm trying not to get my shadow in on it But that's the painting and here's the lay. I have it draping slightly because I thought that'd be pretty cool And there it is. It's actually bright yellow, but here let me move just a tad. There you go And here is the red flower basket with green leaves to complement the red berries and flowers and in the future I haven't been thrift shopping in a while a lot of my stuff pretty much all my stuff is either from the side of the road or from the thrift shop but I'd like to get a cloth that I can put at the back of the crates and have it drape over these two crates I just think that would look really good and I tend to do that over some of my other pieces of furniture but here is a zoomed out version. I might even make this a thumbnail. I don't know. YouTube tends to like it when I put my face in my thumbnails though. So, But that's what that looks like. Let me get it at a more centered angle here. There you go. And <laughs> ignore my stuffed animals. I have stuffed animals everywhere. Um, I... I've had them since I was a kid, so I have them around my house. But there you go. So thank you, Pisto, so much for watching this video. If you enjoy this video and enjoy my other content, I it, it would mean the world to me if you became a member of the Peace Dove Nest. Link is down below in the Coco Ruptu. Uh, also, the link has changed. I changed. The link. It is now blessingvhart.us slash gimme, G-I-M-M-I-E, instead of slash discount. I changed it because I thought slash gimme sounded way cuter. So the link has changed. It'll be in the Cocoa too down below. Um, also, be sure to read my blog or, you know, just check up on it. I, I like writing a lot and stuff, so it'd be nice if y'all read my blog, too. <laughs> 
And I, I, I do hope y'all enjoyed this video despite all the technical errors and everything. I had a lot of fun with it. I had a lot of fun with this painting. Um, and I think it actually does look really cute right there. Excuse me. So if you enjoyed that, please uh, become a member of the Peace Stuff Nest and blushingvhart.us slash gimme has like the whole spiel of sorry something fell it has the whole spiel about all the benefits of becoming a member of the peace dove nest it is free it's an e email list um and you get perks including being able to get the best and deepest discount codes getting sneak peeks on whatever it is i'm working on because i actually do a lot of work behind the scenes that the public doesn't know about you also get a lot of input in terms of future products and everything and just a whole lot of other goodies but like the thing that really gets people uh uh to to join the peace of nest is the instant 20 percent off discount code on anything in my store <laughs> um but yeah, becoming a member of the Peace Stuff Nest has like the best perks ever. Thank you all, all so, so much for watching. It means the world to me that y'all did watch. Uh, and I hope to see you get Peace Stuffs again soon. Adios! <laughs>